didn't mean for this to be a separate file, but here it is. The number of turns. Polynomial functions are smooth, nice, continuous graphs from negative infinity to positive infinity, but often there are turns in the graph. Here is a turn, here is a turn, here is a turn, here is a turn. A turn happens anywhere that the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. Basically, it's when our local minimums and local maximums happen in the graph. Okay? The rule for the number of turns is that the number of turns will be the degree of the function minus 1 at most. Now this gets kind of confusing because if you have a graph that's like degree 3, that graph without anything else added to it will actually have zero turns. Even though it kind of does this little slow down in the middle, it still is never turning. It's going from decreasing up, up positive increasing the entire time. However, if we add some stuff to it, and I'm just picking random stuff, I don't know if this actually looks like this, but by adding other stuff to our function, it often makes it turn up and down a bit. So you can see here that this graph has two turns. It has one local maximum and one local minimum where the graph has changed directions. Look at the great degree of this graph. The degree of the function is 3. So since the degree is 3, we go 3 minus 1 equals 2. And so 2 turns is the most the graph will have. But like we just looked at here with this one, this one's also degree 3, but it has 0 turns. That's because 2 turns is the most turns it will have. Okay. Let's look at uh, y equals x to the fourth. Again, this graph looks a lot like a parabola with the ends going up like that. And this one has one turn. You cannot have an even degree without having at least one turn because it has to change directions to go up, up. But then other stuff might be added to it so that it could possibly have one, two, three turns, but still with the ends of the graph being going up, up. So we look at the degree. The degree is 4. We subtract 1. We get a 3. And so we have, at most, three turns. And that's just another little feature that helps us figure out how to graph. Okay, I was going to make this a separate video, but instead I'm going to include it with this. Let's just do one final example, putting everything together that we've learned. Putting it all together. Polynomial function. This is just an example. f of x equals x squared, x plus 4, x minus 3. Now this particular function I'm giving to you in factored form. Uh, some of the problems you'll get won't be factored and you will have to begin the problem by factoring it. This one, for example, would have a greatest common factor that would come out first and then you would have to unfoil factor out the remaining stuff. This one comes factored. We're going to go through a list of questions. Let's find the x-intercepts. Some of this stuff is stuff we've learned previously and we just need to review it. So to find the x-intercepts we set y equal to 0 and solve. In this case we're going to solve by using the zero product property so that we take each of our factors equal to 0 to find our x-intercepts. What's another name for our x-intercepts? Well, zeros, of course, because that's where 
y equals 0. I got ahead of myself. x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. Okay, so there are three zeros. What would the degree of this function be? I guess I maybe should have done that first. Um, the degree would be x squared times x times x if we foiled the whole thing out. So let's just talk about that really fast. The degree will be 4. That means there should be four zeros. So why aren't there four zeros? Well, sometimes zeros can be imaginary, and that's one reason why you might not have four zeros. And we won't talk about that till section 5.6. But in this case right here, notice how one of our zeros has multiplicity. So that's where our fourth zero is, because the zero at zero has a multiplicity of two. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is find the y-intercept. Now, if this is a function, like it is, there will only be one y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. So we go 0 squared times 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 3. And in this case, this 0 out front, multiplying by 0, makes the entire thing 0. So the only y-intercept happens at 0, 0. That's just going to be for our use in graphing this problem later. Okay, next. I have this numbered item 2 on my graph, on my list, although I know we've already done a ton of stuff. Degree, we've done x-intercepts, and we've done the y-intercept. Okay, now the next question is, does the graph touch or cross at each x-intercept? So we already talked about that briefly because we talked about how 0 has a multiplicity of 2. So at 0, it's going to touch. But at negative 4 and at positive 3, it's going to cross. And the reason is that at those points, we have an odd multiplicity. A multiplicity of 1 is odd, so it crosses. Okay, next. Next, we're going to do end behavior. Since this one's not multiplied out, it's a little bit trickier than normal, but just remember you would foil it all together, so you, when you end up foiling it all together, you would have x squared times x times x, so that that leading term would be y equals x to the fourth. That is the power function that it will resemble. Therefore, we know for our graph that the ends of the graph that will be up, up, correct? That is the answer that they are asking you to give them. Okay, the maximum number of turning points. Comes from taking the degree, which is 4, and subtracting 1. So there might be, at most, 3 turning points. Or there could just be one. There will never be two or zero for a degree four polynomial. Three at most. It will either be three or it will be one, but we don't know yet. Okay, the next step is to make a table of other points. We've talked about that before where we can plug in some x values into our function, find the y values for those. We don't need to use the x-intercepts because we know that it's going to be 0 at the x-intercepts. So pick other numbers besides the numbers we've already talked about at 0, negative 4, and positive 3. So, um, I don't know, you could go down to negative 10, that's going to get a little bigger. Or you could do a number like 2 that's not one of our zeros. So 2 squared is 4, um, and then 2 plus 4 is 6, and 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. So we have 4 times 6 is 24 times a negative 1 is negative 24. Well, that's probably going to go off the graph when we start to graph it. I find it easiest to actually start graphing it first before you do this. Because then you put everything in that you know so far, and then you can know where else to pick points to figure out things that you don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead. We have 
uh, y-intercept at 0, we have a y-intercept at negative 4, we have a y-intercept at positive 3. We have, and I'm saying y-intercepts when actually those are x-intercepts. Sorry, my fault. Okay, so then we know the ends of the graph are going to be going up, up, and we know that the graph is going to touch at 0. So it's going to cross through at that point with the end of the graph going up. It's going to touch at that point. It's going to cross at that point with the end of the graph going up. So we know that this is going to have to touch by going upside down. So we can kind of already tell based on the number of zeros that there really are going to be three turning points and not just one. Now at this point we can use this number to help us figure out other parts of the graph and what it looks like. At two it's actually at negative 24. So it might have been better if we'd made this part of the graph go clear down below because that's what it's going to do to get clear down to negative 24 for that point. So you could also plug in maybe some of these points, um, positive 1 or negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3. I would suggest negative 2. That will kind of give you an idea for how low that maximum is going to go. But notice I didn't actually ask you for what the maximum points are at this point. And so you just you don't have to have your graph perfectly, you just need to know in general what it's going to look like, and you're done.